Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bracketology. We are exactly one week out from Selection Sunday, and the college basketball landscape is starting to, starting to shape up. We know who's going to make the tournament, who might not, who needs to do stuff this weekend, who has a lot to do this weekend or this week. A lot of conference tournaments going on. A lot of conference tournaments have actually already wrapped up. Uh, there are some teams that have made their that are that have automatically qualified. We're gonna run through all of that today. We have a proper bracket. I'm gonna go through all the seeds, all the bubble teams, and then we will do picks. Cause it's fun to make picks. We like making picks. It's a, it's it can prep you maybe for uh, for your bracket come March. Although I wouldn't listen to me. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to picks sometimes. So. Uh, Take this advice uh, to your own discretion, but let's 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 start. One seeds, UConn, Purdue, and Houston are all gonna be ones. Now the interesting thing is we don't know which order they're gonna be in. Who's gonna be the number one overall seed, and who might be like the third number one? And that could be important because the number one team gets to pick the region that they play in. So like if UConn was number one, they would obviously pick East, and then Purdue would pick Midwest and Houston would pick either South or West. So those three are definitely going to be ones. It's just going to be a matter of, they all have three losses. They're all like 26 and three, 27 and three. It's going to depend on like if two of them win their conference and one of them doesn't, then that would leave the one maybe lagging behind. We'll have to see. Ultimately, I don't think it's really going to matter where they shape out. It'll it'll end up working out just fine. Now, the last number one is between two teams, in my opinion. It's either North Carolina or Tennessee. And I went back and forth on this. I went with North Carolina because that win at Duke is really, really impressive. And similarly with these teams, whoever does better this week is probably going to get that one. And the, whoever doesn't is going to be saddled with a two. So... I currently think UNC is a little bit better resume-wise. I really liked that win at Duke. Um, rivalry game came in one pretty easily, too. So I like UNC there. Two seeds. I got Iowa State, Tennessee, Marquette, and Creighton. I think that's, uh, that's reasonable. I saw a lot of people with Arizona at a two. I think Arizona's overrated. And here's kind of the problem with making a bracket. I had to balance who I thought was good enough and who I thought, like, who, you have to balance who you th what seed you think the team should be and what seed you think they will end up being. Like, do I think Arizona will be a two? They win the Pac-12 probably. I don't think they're good enough to be a two, though. I think Marquette, Creighton, Iowa State, Tennessee, I think all those teams are better, in my opinion. That's all I have with the two-line. Three-line, I got Arizona, Duke, Baylor, Kansas. I mean, I think Kansas and Baylor are the next tier of Big 12 teams after Houston and Iowa State. Because Houston and Iowa State are kind of running away with it. They're the one and two seeds. And then Duke, I have it a three. Arizona, I have it a three. I think both those teams are kind of overrated, if you're asking me, but... That's just some. I just realized I can't have same conference next to each other. I can't have Washington State next to Arizona. So let me just switch these two real quick. Sorry about that. Four seeds. I got Illinois, Kentucky, Auburn, BYU. Four seeds. Five seeds. Alabama, Texas Tech, Utah State, South Carolina. Six seeds. St. Mary's, Gonzaga, these two are basically on the same level. They're going to play each other most likely for the West Coast Conference title. Whoever wins that, maybe a five? I don't know. That That's interesting. But those two, these two teams are, are pretty much the same caliber. I'm just going to have them ranked right next to each other. And then Washington State, San Diego State, two teams that have been on the rise as of late. Seven seeds, Clemson. Nevada, who's had an impressive season. Dayton, who was at like a five or a four through majority of the year. They've kind of been slipping. They're not going to miss the – if they lose their conf, in their conference tournament, they're not going to miss the tournament, I don't think. But they've been slipping a little bit. And Boise State's kind of just one of those Mountain West teams that's pretty solid. Eight seeds. We got Wisconsin, who was 
the, you want to know how long it's been since I adjusted this bracket? Wisconsin on this bracket was a two seed. And I think an eight might even still be generous. This team has been playing bad, very poorly, very poorly. Florida kind of came out of nowhere in the SEC there in the tournament conversation. FAU, Nebraska are my eights. My nines are Virginia, Northwestern, Texas, Colorado State. Colorado State, I mean, Colorado State has to be careful. They are the seven seed in the uh, Mountain West tournament. They play San Jose State to open up that tournament. If they lose that game, I think they might be done. Because they kind of have like, Quite a few losses for a Mountain West team to be considered, but they have a lot of really good wins. That's the thing. So I don't know. I'm telling you right now, though, that's a game to watch. They better win that game. That's Wednesday at 3.30. So I don't know. San Jose State's 9-22. and 22. I don't think they're going to lose that game, but there's always a chance. 10 seeds. Mich okay, I don't think Michigan State should be in the tournament. They're 18-13. and 13. They have a, like a good strength of schedule, but there are teams like IU and Iowa who are, have the same record, same Big Ten record. In fact, IU, my Hoosiers, just beat Michigan State, and everyone still thinks Michigan State's going to make the tournament. No one even has IU close. But I have them at a 10 because I know, I think if they win their first game, they play Minnesota in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. If they beat Minnesota and then lose to Purdue, I think they'll get in. I think they're going to see the name. They're going to see Tom Izzo, and they'll give him a bid. I don't think they should be a 10, but I think that that's where they'll, they'll put them. TCU and Oklahoma are both very mid Big 12 teams, but they're in the Big 12, so they're going to get in. And you know that they're pretty decent if they're holding up with teams in the Big 12. And then James Madison. I looked. They're 30-3. and three. You, you heard that right. They're 30-3, and three and also... If I am understood correctly, Appalachian State, who was their big competition to maybe knock them out, App State was actually the one seed and had beaten James Madison twice. They got beat in the semifinal by Arkansas State. And James Madison is actually currently playing Arkansas State right now, and they are up 42-32 at halftime. So if James Madison can finish out that half, they will be officially in. And, I don't know, if Arkansas State comes back, though, could be a potential bid stealer, because I think James Madison will still get a bid, but I'm like, 30-3, and three, you can't have that as, like, an 11 seed. you got to give them at least a 10, so I think a 10's fair for James Madison. 11's, okay, now let's talk, okay, I, I want to mention one thing. When I was making this bracket, I thought I had it all figured out, and then I had two teams in there that, like, shouldn't have been in there. Like, I think I had Cincinnati in there, they're not going to make the tournament, and I, I eventually, I had two open slots after I figured out who my last four in and first four out were, which I'll talk about in a minute. <coughs> All right. I think coughing up a little bit. I don't know. I had two open spots. So I saved these for, bi for potential bid stealers. Now, bid stealers, if you're unfamiliar, you guys are probably all familiar, but I'll explain it anyway. It's basically... If there's a team that is not supposed to make the tournament or and they win their conference and so they take a bid from another team, like the in the A-10, Dayton is going to make the tournament no matter what. But there are some pretty legitimate teams in there like Loyola and Richmond and VCU who all will have like a really good shot to win that conference title. And if they do win it, they would automatically get in, and Dayton would still get in. So they would be taking a spot from someone else, and I figured I would save these two open spots for potential bid stealers. Here are the two that I think will have a chance. Loyola and Memphis, both of which aren't going to make the tournament unless they win their conference, but they both, I think, have maybe good enough teams to do so. And normally you see bid stealers from these pretty decent conferences sit around 11 or 12 seeds. So... If you are a fan of any of these teams, you better hope that these two don't win their conference or any other teams don't don't pull through. Just a little something to keep an eye on. But I, this is just kind of like a probationary. Once these teams lose, I might make another bracket not too long from now, like maybe on 
Friday or Saturday I'll make one. If these two teams will have lost, then most likely one of these these teams are going to get in and everyone will move up a spot. This is just kind of a precautionary thing, and I think it's kind of a fun thing to incorporate into your bracketology. Now, 11 seats, Drake took down Indiana State in the Missouri Valley Conference title. That was a tremendous that was a tremendous game. Drake got out to a huge lead. Indiana State came all the way back, even took the lead. But ultimately, Drake took them down and won the conference. Now the question arises, is will Indiana State still get in? And I think yes. They're 28-6. and six, And the advanced metrics like them a lot. When it comes to picking teams for the tournament, I'm not the biggest fan of always look at the net, always look at their efficiency ratings. But, you know, they're 28-6. and six. The numbers like them. Their only two like losses that they really had were like Alabama and Michigan State. And it was at Michigan State. So I don't know. They have a really good record. They space the floor and shoot the three really well. They're a really good team. I, I think they should make it, in my opinion. And I don't know. It's going to be a question mark on whether or not they make it. But as of now, I have them in. Uh, who else? So Drake's automatically in because they won. Who else are my 11s? Uh, yeah, Loyola Memphis. And then the last one. All right, let's get to the let's get to these bubble teams. Here are my current for last four in. Indiana State, Seton Hall, St. John's, Colorado. Indiana State obviously does not have any more games to play, but Seton Hall, St. John's, Colorado, they all do have games to play. And interestingly enough, St. John's and, and Seton Hall play each other in the first round of the Big East tournament. Actually, second round. It, from when they all get by. So it's the four versus the five. That game is Thursday, I believe. Um, unless I am viewing this wrong. Yeah. Now it's technically a home game for St. John since we're playing at Madison Square Garden. But here's what I'm saying. When these two play each other, I think the winner is going dancing. Loser's not. That I think that is a play-in game. As far as I'm concerned, the winner of that game will make the tournament the loser won't. That's just my opinion, but look out, look out for that. That's going to be an interesting, a very interesting game. The Colorado, they kind of are just, I don't know. They have a, they have a good record. I have them as the last team in. I mean, they're 22 and nine. They got, I think at least for, for their sake, they got to do some damage in the Pac-12 tournament. They open against, uh, okay, they, they, got a, they got the double, they got the bye. I don't know who they play, but if they lose their first game after the bye, I don't think they get in. So I think all three of these teams are going to have to win at least one game in their conference tournament, and two of them play each other. So that could maybe open the door for these teams. A&M, my first four out is A&M, Mississippi State, you can group, I think, all eight of these in the same category. All these teams have work to do. But they all can still make it. Indiana, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas State, Wake Forest, AM, Mississippi State, they all have win numbers below 20. But they can all get to 20. I think all these teams are going to have to win at least two games. At least one, most likely two. Maybe three. But all these teams, if they win two games in their conference tournaments, even Pitt and New Mexico. New Mexico, they have a decent record, but they're kind of they've been slipping in Mountain West play. They're gonna have to show out in the tournament. All these teams, if they win and some teams ahead of them lose, they could still get in. I like I go to Indiana, I'm a Hoosiers fan through and through. They actually, I think, have a favorable schedule. They play the winner of Penn State and Michigan. I know they lost to Penn State twice, but there's no way they lose to them three times. Then they play, if they win that game, they play Nebraska. I know they already lost to Nebraska twice, but, I mean, are they really going to lose to Nebraska three times? I don't know. I like that. I like the fact that they're going to have a revenge factor in both of those games if they were to win the first one. So I think Indiana could be a team to watch out for, and their next game would be against either Illinois or Iowa or Ohio State. I think they could beat all three of those. Watch out for the Hoosiers. That's kind of a long roundabout way of saying that. Because they have a pretty pretty favorable path. I hope I hope two or three wins is enough to get them in. 
I'm going to be praying on the downfall of some other teams. Hopefully no bid stealers for my Hoosiers. Let's go to the lower seeds. 12 seeds. You know you got to watch out for them. 5-12 upsets. We got Princeton. We got South Florida. We got one of the play-ins and then McNeese. All of them, I think, are poised for an upset. South Florida is currently first in the American. And a lot of people think if they don't win their conference tournament, they won't get in. I don't know, because here's the problem. Their net ranking is terrible. They're like in the 80s. Same thing with IU, too. But IU can get some quad one wins and get that up. I think that, I don't know. They, they were sitting at 26 and 5, and then they lost to Tulsa their last game of the year. It didn't hurt them. They already won the outright regular season title, but we'll see. If they win their, they had been, they started the year like 3 and 4, and then were scorching hot throughout the entire year. They won like 20 in a row or something. They got ranked. But a lot of people don't like their metrics. I don't know. They're an interesting team. I don't know what they're going to do with them. I, I have them at a 12. But if they lose, could be a last four in situation. I have no idea what they're going to do with South Florida, if I'm being completely honest with you. Princeton, really impressive record. They only have like three losses on the year. I don't know if they're going to... If they don't win their conference, though, I doubt they give the Ivy League two bids. Like, if Yale wins the conference and Princeton finishes at like 30-4, and four, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get them in. I think they're just going to win the league outright, so I don't think that'll be an issue. But maybe a two-bid Ivy could happen. Probably not, though. And then McNeese out of the Southland. A lot of people like them. They, they play a fun style. A lot of offensive rebounding. They, they like to run up the court. So McNeese is a possible upset team. They, they've been looking really good. 13 seeds. We have Akron, Grand Canyon, Charleston, and Sanford. Sanford likes to play at a really fast pace. They have a good offense. Maybe watch out for them. 14 seeds, we got Moorhead State. They clinched. They won the Ohio Valley, so they're automatically in. Montana is currently in the big sky. I think that they're the favorite to win of the teams that are left. Eastern Washington was the number one seed in the conference and lost to the 10 seed, Sacramento State. This is March. And then we also got Longwood, who clinched. They won the Big South. And then UC Irvine, I think, is still the favorite to come out of the Big West. 15 seeds, South Dakota State, Sam Houston, Colgate, and Vermont. If you, I mean, all these teams are pretty decent, but are they going to win a game against a two seed? I, I don't know. 16 seeds, Oakland, Quinnipiac, and then my 16 seed play ends. I got Merrimack out of the NEC. This is their first year eligible, and they're, they are the one seed, and I think they're playing in the championship later today, actually. I think they play today. Let me fact check that NEC NEC East Conference tomorrow they play Wagner for the league title Stetson they won their conference because who got beat in that conference Eastern Kentucky was the one seed and they got beat by the 10 seed Jacksonville it was a crazy upset and so Stetson won the conference as the two seed and they actually have never made the tournament. In like 55 years, they've been eligible. They've never made the tournament. So congratulations, Stetson. And the Norfolk State and Grambling are your two HBCU conference favorites, and they always put the HBCU winners in the first four. So that's kind of what we're sitting at there. How long is this video so far? 18 minutes. All right, let's do some picks. I'm not going to do like a ton of reasoning for the picks, but let's just, let's just make some picks because, you know, we like filling out brackets here. And most people that do bracketology don't fill out picks. I think it's fun. You kind of get to look at where teams stay and what a favorable matchup might look like. UConn is going to beat Oakland. I don't think anyone's going to argue that. If you ask me, I don't think either one of these teams is that great. To be honest, though, I'd be more inclined to pick Colorado State just because Wisconsin's been playing really bad ball. Really bad ball. They were like number six in the country now they're sitting at like 19 and 11 if they lose to they play the winner of Rutgers and maryland if they lose that game in the big 10 tournament they might play themselves out of a seed if you're i mean i don't even know anymore alabama i think is an upset i'm gonna take them here just because i don't think that they're gonna lose to either one of these two alabama's an upset prone team and i'll tell you why they don't play defense Every single one of their games is like 199. 
to where if they have an off shooting night, they don't have the defense to keep them in the game. I just think, like, this isn't to say they're a bad team. They're crazy good on offense. But those types of teams normally get upset. I'm going to take BYU here. Um, they're they're uh, they're legit, man. They they A lot of people didn't think they'd make a lot of noise in the Big 12, but they marched right in and hung with everybody. I'm taking Drake over St. Mary's. That team looked really good when they played Indiana State. Uh, give me Kansas over Montana. And as much as I think Michigan State shouldn't get in, like I talked about earlier, you know if they get in, they're winning at least a game. Like, you know that's going to happen. Because it's Tom Izzo. You know it's going to happen. I'm going to take Michigan State. And then you guys know how much I love Iowa State. Every year I pick them, and every year they disappoint me. I'm looking at my bracket from this year. I picked them to go to the Sweet 16. And they uh, got beat by Pitt in the first round. So thank you for that, Iowa State. Please, I'm going to pick Iowa State to make a run. I'm telling you right now. I'll probably have them lead eight or final four. And when they lose to Colgate in the first round, I'm going to kill somebody. Not actually. Um, UNC, definitely. Uh, ooh. I'll tell you why I like Nebraska in this game. Because Virginia, they play that pack line defense. But the Achilles heel for the pack line defense is teams that know how to shoot. That's what UMBC did when they upset them. They just were like, oh, okay, we'll just pull it from deep every single time. We'll pull up. We'll, if you're going to give us the three, we're going to take it. That is exactly how Nebraska likes to play. 8-9 matchup, I'm taking Nebraska every single time. I, I'm sorry to all the South Carolina fans out there. I think this upset's a slam dunk. South Carolina is a team that does good against good teams and not as great against not as great teams. I think that they're upset prone. I think they're not as good as their record says. I think Princeton would beat them. I think that's a good upset to look for. I think Illinois would beat Akron. As funny as it would be to see them lose. Um, I don't think that Loyola would beat San Diego State. So I'm going to take them. Look, I, I know Arizona's fraudulent. I'm telling you right now they're fraudulent. I don't think they're that great. They have some really head-scratching losses. And they got upset last year when everyone thought they were really good. I don't think Longwood is the team to do it, though. I'm gonna take that. It's going to take them in this game. I'm taking the Dukes, man. I, I, I don't care. 30 and 3 is 30 and 3. You got to love teams that where winning is a habit. I'm, I'm taking James Madison. And then I'm going to take Creighton down here. All right. Other side. <laughs> look. Look. As much as I want to pick Merrimack or Stetson. I don't think Purdue's gonna let that happen again. I think this Purdue team's gonna be gonna be a force come March. I think there's something different about this team. And I hope I'm wrong, because I don't like them as an Indiana fan, but that's just what I think. I'm gonna go with uh oof, this is a coin flip. I'm gonna go with Texas. I don't know. Florida might be better on paper, but Texas got Mac a Max Ace best. I think yeah, I, I like Texas here. Give me McNeese. Easy. I don't think Texas Tech is as good as people are saying. I think they're a little overrated. Like, I think they're deserving of a five seed, but I think they're kind of not as good as a five seed. McNeese has some dogs, man. I'm taking them. Auburn. Okay. I'm, Auburn, well, a thing to think about with Auburn, they're one and seven in quad one games, but they haven't even lost a quad two or quad three game. So they clean up really well against not as great teams. Can't really beat the good teams. But I, so I, that's why I think they won't get upset when, they, like, if they play Purdue, they probably would lose. Um, uh, ooh, oh, ooh. I'm going to take the play in. Because I think every year there's a play in team that wins their play in game and then wins in the first round. Like, every single time. Every single time. I like both those teams. I think e e either one of them could beat Gonzaga. Baylor, I think, is an easy pick here over Moorhead. This is a team that's built for the tournament. They've won a national title not too long ago. They're a really good team. Ah, I don't think either one of these teams are really that great, if you ask me. I definitely think TCU could be a value pick. Like I feel like a lot of people would take Dayton. I don't know. I don't think either one of those teams, they're both tournament caliber teams, but like are either one of them really that great? I don't know. I'm going to take TCU, and then I'm going to take Tennessee here. 
All right. Now, here's the thing with Houston. I'm going to take them in the first round, obviously. And I think they're a different team this year. I had them winning the national title. I've been telling people this. Because they're in the Big 12 now. You can't be like, oh, well, they haven't played nobody. How are they going to be in a tournament team? They're playing Big 12 teams every night. They're beating them every night. I'm pretty sure they have someone hurt, though. I don't remember who it was. I'm going to just look at something real quick. Yeah. JoJo Tugler broke a bone in his right foot and will miss the remainder of the tournament. Calvin Sampson. Now, this is exactly what happened to UCLA last year, where I thought they were the best team coming into the tournament. I looked at the one scenes. I didn't like any of them a lot. I picked UCLA to win it all, but Brandon Clark was hurt. And I'm like, nah, it's still good for it. But that, it, that it didn't end up coming to haunt them. So I don't know if that's a big deal for Houston. He's not like one of the, like, Jamal Shedd and LJ Cryer are like they're really good players, but like they lost a freshman. I mean, it will it hurt? I don't know how much it'll hurt them. Ugh. I don't know. I think FAU beats Northwestern. FAU was in this exact same spot last year and came through, so I think they win there. Ooh, hmm, interesting matchup we have here. I already took two 12 seeds. I'm not gonna take a third. Give me Utah State. And then, hmm, I'm going to take Grand Canyon. Kentucky lost to UNC Wilmington earlier this year, which shows they can be upset. And that was at home. I know they have some good wins, but, like, they also have an overtime game against St. Joe's. This is a team that I feel like does not play very well against subpar teams. Could get upset. I'm going to take Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon's got a good squad. Uh, give me Washington State. I, I don't think Memphis is going to win their league. I just kind of put that there as a possibility. I think Washington State would beat them. I think Duke beats UC Irvine, even though it would be hilarious if UC Irvine won and it rushed the court. Um, I'm definitely taking Nevada here. Oklahoma is in the same boat as TCU. Uh, I like Nevada a lot more than I like Dayton, though, if I'm being, if I'm being honest with everybody. And then I'm going to take Marquette. Back-to-back -back years of a two-seed, probably. I like them more. Okay, second round. UConn, definitely, I feel like, is going to win this game. Ooh, I'm taking BYU. I don't think Alabama's that good, guys. I really don't think they are. Am I just going to end up taking... I'm going to take Kansas. Look, every year I pick Iowa State and they crumble. Every year. Every year. And every year Michigan State squeaks into the tournament with like 13 losses and then they make the Sweet 16. That's what they did last year. I'm telling you, if Michigan State makes the tournament, they're going to win. Like, I'm telling you, they're going to win. I don't actually... And one thing with Iowa State, too, is sometimes they get into a lot of really low-scoring games because of their defense at low-scoring games and when upsets happen. I don't know. Sue me. Um, okay. People are really not going to like this. People are really not going to like this. But Nebraska is the perfect team to pull off an 8-versus-1 type of upset. Because if they get hot from three, you're done. If, if Tominaga is shooting six of eight from three on the game, you're not going to win. If they, catch, if they catch fire, they're a force. I'm taking Nebraska. I'm telling you. They, they, can, make, they can do some damage just because their three-point three shooting is so good. Princeton made the Sweet 16 last year, so I don't think it's going to happen again. I think I'm going to take Illinois. Ah, I just realized that the Big Ten always folds in the tournament. I got three going into the Sweet Six. You know what? We're changing this. Michigan State's not that good. We're taking Iowa State. Um, I know I'm not supposed to have conferences next to each other. I don't know. Sue me. I'm taking San Diego. Arizona's fraudulent, and San Diego State knew how to get to the national title last year, so I think they're going to do it. Not make the national title, but I think they can definitely win here. Arizona, I don't think it's doing anything. And then I'm going to take Creighton. 
All right, and then over here, I'm going to take Purdue. And then I'm going to take Auburn because I said they're really good against not so great teams. Not the, not the same McNeese is terrible or anything, but I think Auburn would win that. And then over here, I think it would be Baylor. And then over here, I think it would be Tennessee. I think that's pretty straightforward. Oh, man. Oh, man. Look, FAU did it last year. I don't think more than one eight seed is going to win. I think Houston would still win. And then over here, give me Utah State. Utah State's been having a really good year. They've been ranked like damn near the whole year. Um, Give me, give me Duke and give me Marquette. Okay. Let's move on to the Elite Eight Sweet 16 games. I have three Big 12 teams here. I, I don't know how I screwed that up. I'm going to take UConn. And then uh, I'm taking Iowa State. I think they're better than Kansas. That's that's just a... I, don't know, I just think they're better. And then over here... Ooh, uh, let's write it out. Give me, give me Nebraska. If you, I'm telling you, when they get hot, you can't beat them. I saw, I saw them murder IU from the free, from the three point line twice this year. So, don't let them get hot. And then this is a revenge game for Creighton because San Diego State knocked them out last year by one point in the Elite Eight. So I think Creighton would get them back. And, oh, an Elite Eight man. Oh, that's a big rivalry. Creighton, Nebraska. They play every. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh wow, that would be fun. Um. Give me Purdue over Auburn. And then uh, give me... Ooh. Definitely give me Tennessee. I feel like. And then down here. I can't in good conscience have Utah State go to the Elite Eight. I'm sorry. I'm taking Houston. And then... Ooh. See, I don't think Duke and Marquette are really that great. Like, they're good teams. I don't think either one's Elite Eight caliber, though. But both of them kind of had, I gave him a little bit of an easy road. I'm going to take Marquette. Actually, no, I'm going to take Duke. Nah, I'm going to take Duke. The name's bigger. I, I'm just going to take Duke. All right. Final four time. Huh. Look, Iowa State's defense is crazy. And I think for to go back to back, you have to be better. The, I'm talking about UConn. To go back to back, no team's ever gone back to back since like Florida, and it just doesn't happen all the time. To go back to back, I think you have to be better the second year than you were the first. Now, you might think that's the case with UConn because their record's so much better. I think that their roster makeup and like the way their team was built last year is way better than it was this year. Sonogo and Klingon on the same. Donovan Klingon, I don't think can carry the load all by him. Like he's a he's a good player, but like I don't know. I think if they run into a good defensive team like Iowa State, they could lose. This isn't me trying to rag on UConn. I'm taking Iowa State though. I know it's gonna come back. I can't I can't wait till I pick Iowa State to make the final four and then lose to Cold War. I'm gonna go over here. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say Purdue's. Purdue's different this year and that they're gonna I don't know. I think they're different. I, I don't I think they are. Their guards are more experienced. They're gonna have that a massive chip and revenge tour mindset. Because it's the entirely same team. I think that they're gonna do that. Um Meh. Okay. <laughs> this is interesting because this is a massive rivalry game. Both these teams are out of Nebraska. They play every year, I think. And as good as Nebraska has been this year, Creighton embarrassed them this year. Creighton beat them by like 25 or something. It was bad. But Nebraska, I mean, oh, the story would just be too good. And they would have the revenge factor too. They could look at their, oh, man. It's a practice bracket. Let's get let's get weird. Let's get weird. And then over here. 
You mean Houston. The Big Ten bias is just glaring. I'm sorry. I promise I won't make a I won't make my actual bracket this bad. We got Iowa State. We got Nebraska. We got Purdue. We got Houston. I don't think Nebraska is going to be making a national title. I'm sorry. Give me Iowa. Oh, God. And then, oh, man. I'm going to take Houston just because their guards are so good on defense. Like, Jamal, like, Jamal, like, their guards are so good on defense. That's the, that's what they've built their team on. Is how good their guards are on defense. And I think Braden Smith and Fletcher Laura would just have a tough time. I just think they would. Edie could definitely get his fair share of points, but I think it would be hard for, for them to win that game. And then to win the national title, I'm going to take Houston. I just think they're the best team overall. Their defense is so good. They don't have that, oh, well, who they played all year anymore they've, they've been battle tested they've beaten everyone there is to be these two teams by the way they split in the regular season uh iowa state won at home and houston won at home these two teams could play the big 12 title i don't know who knows i think these two teams are playing incredibly good ball i think houston's the best team right now i just think they're the, i just think they're the best team you can agree with that you can disagree with that I, i'm not gonna lie you can torch that bracket to shreds in the comments for all i care i don't i i i looked at when i was making that and then i kind of looked at who i was kind of like brass in the final four i don't know but i don't know if you think you're getting a perfect bracket this year you're not you're just not so uh i hope you guys all enjoyed this video i'll try to get another one out soon and i will see you next time peace out everybody